All right, so we're finally getting some heavier rain to test this rain shield. Um, see if I can give you a perspective of the rain here. You might be able to see it, see the rain coming down there. And let me kind of go to the street. Let's see if we can focus on this. So it kind of gives you an idea. We've got we've got pretty good. It's a pretty pretty decent rain. I don't know if I would actually fly in much heavier rain than this because um, anything heavier than this and your sensors are going to be kind of useless anyway. So this is this is a, a good test uh, of the rain shield. So what we're going to do, we're going to take off. We're going to fly around at some decent speeds and. Uh, then we're going to come back and look underneath it and the goal is to have uh, li little to no water that actually makes contact with that intake you know kind of like a uh, a windshield if you will so more like a motorcycle windshield uh, keep the vast majority of water off of there to where we don't have any water impingement uh, going into the aircraft itself so here we go by the way, I'm not going to track the aircraft. This isn't uh, an entertainment video. This is just uh, you joining me in a test. Pretty good. We've got water dripping off the aircraft in the air. Try and get this way. Catch most of it. There we go. I had a discussion uh, with Jason on Facebook today. He's asking about does the pitch angle, whenever you're moving forward like that, does that change as far as that IP rating? And, and yes, I would assume so, even though we don't know about the test. How they exactly how they test it? I would assume they put it on a table and sprayed water at it um, until they had some kind of an issue. And so, if that's the case, then yes, um, it would it would definitely have a an effect on it. But one of the things you need to consider is that braking as well has an inverse effect. So I move forward, it's one thing, but sooner or later I have to brake. And whenever you brake, you're actually increasing that angle. Um, but more than that, it's going to be the uh, speed, the speed that, that they actually strike the baffles um, and stuff like that. So all right, so let's ramp up the speed a little bit here. I'm going to put it in sport mode. Gain a little altitude. Do some hard braking. Come back the other way. More hard braking. Some maneuvering in a circle. Get a little bit of lateral movement there. And so we've been flying for almost four minutes now. Uh, that's probably a pretty good sample. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it in and uh, land this thing. And then we'll go and take a look underneath. lined up since we first started flying but we flew in heavy rain and now kind of a, a lighter rain but let's take a look all right let 
move this over here so I have a little room. Okay. So, let's see if maybe we can. Maybe this will be better. There we go. Okay. So there it is. Pretty soaking wet. We had looks like we had water running off the top. So hopefully that seal held up good. You see we've got water down there. A lot of water down there on the gimbal plate. Um, but that's been there been able to do that for a while see what it looks like underneath here dry so it looks like we have we have a line of water up here where the seals at we have a tad bit of water down here where that deflector pushes it down towards the bottom the intake grate itself there's no water on it other than where I just touched the screen, my finger. Um, it kept, it kept all the water out of that intake. So very good. Uh, another successful test and uh, we'll keep doing some more testing on it, but this has proven to be a pretty effective device so far. So, all right. Talk to you later.